in 2016 in the city of Mendoza, Argentina. On January 10th, two young women, 21-year-old Marina Monago and 22-year-old Maria Jose Coni, set out on a much-anticipated journey. This journey soon turned into a significant investigation in Latin America. Maria Jose Coni was studying economics at the National University of Cuyo, while Marina Menaza was studying speech therapy at Aconcaga University. Both were actively involved as volunteers, helping people who were struggling to find a place to live. Friends and acquaintances often described them as cheerful and deeply connected to their families. The two friends embarked on this trip with two others, but eventually went their separate ways. They started their journey on January 10th, and their route could be traced through Maria Jose Coney's Instagram posts until January 13th. The girls were already in a place called Equit by January 23rd, and their journey was coming to an end. Their Instagram posts hinted at their travel adventures and seemed like a farewell as they prepared to return to Argentina. Maria Jose Coni and Marina Menazo still had about 10 days of vacation left, so they decided to extend their stay and headed back to Montanita, marking the beginning of their Ecuadorian experience. On February 22nd, Maria showered a photo with Marina, and this would be the last post on her Instagram account. Around the same time, they contacted their families in Argentina, informing them of their plans to return. They were supposed to take a bus from Ecuador to Lima in Peru, spend a night at a friend's place, and then fly from Lima to Santiago, the capital of Chile, on February 25th. From Santiago, they would take a bus to their hometown, Mendoza, in Argentina. During this time, the girls informed their families that they might be difficult to reach due to poor phone signal. However, as days passed, their families grew increasingly anxious. There was no activity on Maria and Marina's social media accounts, and the families were unable to contact them. Marina's sister was the first to draw attention to their disappearance on social media, sharing a photo of the two girls and pleading for information regarding their whereabouts. Worried and desperate for answers, the families tried to ascertain if the girls had left the country and boarded their flight. Yet their attempts to obtain information from the airline representatives proved futile. The friends with whom they were supposed to stay before their departure also confirmed that the girls never showed up. Consequently, the families took the distressing step of contacting emergency services in Ecuador to report the disappearance. They also reached out to the Argentine consulate seeking assistance. The consulate stepped in on February 27th. Argentine authorities sent the fingerprints of both girls to Ecuador. This action was prompted by a discovery a few days earlier. On February 25th, an unknown woman's body was found in Montanita and transported to Guil. By comparing the fingerprints obtained from the Argentine police with those of the unidentified body, they confirmed it was Maria Jose Con. On Saturday, February 27th, after examining the area where Maria's body was found, the police discovered Marina Manazo's body. It was just 43 yards away from Maria's body. Both bodies were wrapped in plastic bags and secured with duct tape. According to Ecuadorian police information, Marina's body was harder to find initially because the criminal tried to conceal it by placing something on top of it. During the autopsy, the medical expert determined that Maria Jose Con died from head injuries caused by blunt force trauma. She had injuries described in a certain way by the Ecuadorian authorities, along with a broken femur and toe. Marks on Maria's wrists indicated she was tied up. Marina Manazo died from six stab wounds to the neck and had similar wrist marks, suggesting she was also tied up. The report stated the girls passed away on February 23rd. Toxicological analysis revealed a significant amount of a drug used in psychiatric treatment in their blood. Given the circumstances of their death, the police concluded the girls did not voluntarily consume this drug and they might not have been aware they had taken it. This suggested someone might have mixed it into their food or drinks. Just 24 hours after finding the second body, a significant development occurred in this case. However, it stirred mixed reactions among the girls' families. Ecuador's president and interior minister announced that the police had solved the case. They arrested 33-year-old Alberto Segundo Mina Pont and 39-year-old Aurelio Eduardo Rodriguez, who confessed and provided details of how the events unfolded. Bloodstains were found in one of the accused, Mina Pont's house. Marina's mobile phone, backpack and other items were discovered nearby. Besides the swift arrests, 
What surprised many was the immediate confession of the two men. This news caused a stir among those following the case. The men presented their version of events. Ecuador's interior minister, Jose Serrano, stated that the girls left the hotel where they had a room on February 22nd at 2 e 1 p.m. Allegedly, someone stole all their money at the hotel, so they planned to hitchhike to Lima. However, this version was disputed by the hotel owner, who claimed that no theft occurred. Maria and Marina's families also doubted this story, as the girls had credit cards with them. Even with a financial crisis, they could have used the cards. Yet, there was no activity on the cards. It remains uncertain whether someone actually stole all the money from Maria and Marina. Further unfolding events might shed light on this mystery. The minister mentioned the statements of people who, I'd like to remind you, confessed their actions fully. Pon, one of the suspects, informed that around 8 all p.m., Rodriguez informed him about two Argentinian girls at a bar. They all engaged in a conversation. In this conversation, Marina and Maria mentioned they were trying to reach Lima through hitchhiking, as they didn't have enough money for a bus. However, this version raises doubts. The girls had already purchased plane tickets from Lima to Santiago in Chile for February 25th. It doesn't make sense for them to hitchhike more than 1,000 miles, risking missing their flight. As mentioned earlier, their flight was scheduled for February 25th, and this conversation, according to Pon, occurred on the evening of February 22nd. Sounds suspicious, doesn't it? On the other hand, witnesses found by the local police confirmed these peculiar accounts. Since it was getting late and the girls needed a place to stay but lacked funds for a hotel or hostel, Pon suggested they stay at his place. The girls agreed. The police found a taxi driver who verified that he drove Marina, Maria and Pon to Pon's residence. The image you see displays Pon's residence. According to information from Ecuadorian authorities, Pon returned to the bar and began drinking with Rodriguez. Meanwhile, Marina and Maria were alone in the house. The heavily intoxicated men returned home around 2.30 a.m., but Maria and Marina were not there. The police learned that the girls went to a nearby store to buy soda. The exact type of soda remains unknown. The police also found a witness, the store's cashier, who verified this. If this account is accurate, it implies that the girls still had some cash. According to Pond's statement, when the girls returned to the house, he stayed in a room with Maria Connie, while Rodriguez was in another room with Marina Monago. Pon admitted he attempted to coerce Maria Connie, but she resisted and tried to leave the house. He then grabbed a stick and hit Maria on the head, resulting in her instantaneous death. At the same time, a scream emanated from the other room. Upon entering, Pon witnessed Rodriguez ending Marina Monago's life. Rodriguez promptly fled the premises. Afterwards, Pon began contemplating how to dispose of the bodies. He tried to eliminate all evidence in the house, securing the bodies in plastic bags and taping them up. During the afternoon, he borrowed a cart from an acquaintance and transported them to a desolate area close to the ocean, about 440 yards away from their home. Just a reminder, everything discussed here is based on the official account by Ecuadorian authorities. However, there was no explanation provided for the marks found on the girls' wrists. Additionally, the toxicological analysis revealed traces of a powerful substance in both girls' blood. Given these circumstances and the discrepancies in the case, the families of the girls began to question the Ecuadorian authorities' narrative. They believed this case might be linked to human trafficking, and the Ecuadorian authorities were concealing the truth. Marina and Maria's families had several reasons to doubt the official version. First, the girls had run out of money but didn't use their credit cards. Second, they were under the influence of drugs. Oddly, the only people who saw Maria and Marina that day were the ones confirming the authorities' account, the bar owner, a taxi driver, and a cashier who supposedly sold soda to the girls. It's worth noting that Monita, the town where this happened, had around 5,000 residents. The families couldn't fathom why the bodies were discovered two days apart merely 43 yards from each other. Moreover, it struck them as strange that Maria and Marina sought help from Pon and Rodriguez. With the sizable Argentine tourist presence in Monitor, it would have been more logical for the girls to approach someone from their own country for help. The brother of one of the victims mentioned seeing used syringes on the floor when the Ecuadorian police showed him the crime scene. Strangely, these syringes vanished when he inquired about them. Furthermore, these syringes were absent from the crime scene photos, and the experts who investigated the place denied their presence. According to the family, 
the two men were merely a facade for something larger, possibly involving human trafficking. Subsequently, the authorities arranged for a second autopsy and a new toxicological examination. It was revealed that both defendants, Pon and Rodriguez, had changed their accounts multiple times. In one version, Pon denied involvement, claiming the actual perpetrator was an illegal substance dealer of Venezuelan origin residing in the vicinity. This man was known by the pseudonym El Chamo. However, this individual vehemently denied any connection to the event and offered to undergo a polygraph test or provide a DNA sample to prove his innocence. Several DNA samples were found at the crime scene, including DNA from Pon, DNA from the deceased girls, and several unidentified samples. These unidentified samples didn't match Rodriguez, the alleged second perpetrator, or El Chamo, who had been ruled out as a suspect after undergoing all the DNA tests. After the second autopsy conducted by Argentine experts, it was evident that both girls were in such a state that they couldn't defend themselves before their demise. Tragically, they had been forced into distressing circumstances. The autopsy also revealed other distressing details. Maria Jose had bruises and scratches on one side of her body, as if she had been thrown out of a moving vehicle. New test results again showed that both girls had taken a strong medicine used for mental health treatment. This drug suppresses a person's control over their actions. The events that unfolded after this sent shockwaves throughout Latin America. Unfortunately, as often happens, people blamed the girls for what happened. Not just regular internet users, but even some well-known public figures held them accountable. One of those who thought the girls were at fault was Ecuador's Deputy Minister of Tourism, Maria Cristina Rodera. Around the same time the news broke about Maria and Marina's passing, Berlin was hosting a tourism fair. During an interview with a German news agency, Rodera suggested that due to the way the girls travelled, something unfortunate was bound to happen sooner or later. She also mentioned she had never been to Manita, implying it was below her social status. This was essentially blaming the victims at a governmental level, a profoundly distressing occurrence. After facing severe backlash for her comments, the Ecuadorian government apologized to Maria and Marina's families and fired Rodera. Among the most criticized was Argentine psychiatrist Hugo Natin, who labeled the girls as easy targets, insinuating that such individuals influence others to commit harmful acts. After immense criticism, the doctor stated that people had misunderstood him and he never excused criminals from accountability. In response to the countless comments online blaming the girls, a student from Paraguay, Guadalupe Auster, wrote a Facebook post on behalf of Maria and Marina. The post went viral, receiving 700,000 shares in its first week. The court proceedings kicked off on August 8, 2016, facing numerous setbacks in the case. The prosecutor changed three times, causing significant delays. Evidence-wise, the prosecution presented witness statements and over 200 pieces of physical evidence from where the incident happened. Police discovered the girls' belongings, biological fluids and phones at the scene. During the trial, Pon maintained his innocence, stating that his confession was coerced by the police. This strengthened the family's belief that the Ecuadorian authorities were hiding something. Rodriguez altered his testimony, suggesting involvement of Colombian individuals linked to banned substances in the girl's demise. Early in the trial's first week, the prosecutor voiced suspicions of other individuals' involvement, pointing to the discovery of three additional male DNA samples at the scene, apart from Rodriguez and Pon's DNA. Ultimately, the court sentenced both Alberto Pon and Eduardo Rodriguez to 40 years in prison, the maximum penalty per Ecuador's laws. In November 2016, Ecuadorian authorities announced the arrest of another individual whose DNA was found at the scene, 34-year-old José Luis Pérez Castro. His defense argued that he had resided in the house weeks prior due to a dental infection. The defense contended that the DNA match was due to innocuous contact with furniture or items he had touched earlier. Castro's defense weakened when a dentist testified, revealing that Castro had sought a note about dental issues weeks after the discovery of Marina and Maria's bodies, despite claiming dental problems during the alleged time. Castro, still denying guilt, faced social media and legal battles. Despite their skepticism, the court sentenced José Luis Castro, akin to Pon and Rodríguez, to 40 years in prison. 
The families of the girls remained doubtful about the Ecuadorian authorities' narrative. They even asserted that Argentine police officers were involved in the investigation, casting shadows on the Ecuadorian version. However, Ecuadorian police maintained their stance, continuing the search for other men whose DNA was found at the house to this day.